twisters are column of air rotated dangerously fast. The air is in motion because of the difference in pressure between the center of the tornado, very low pressure, and the outer edge of the tornado, high pressure. Some tornadoes are narrow, only 250 feet, across where they touch the ground. Others, massive tornadoes, can be up to 2 miles across. Often a tornado will touch the ground for only a few minutes and travel less than a mile. But some tornadoes touch down for much longer, plowing through several towns, neighborhoods or farms. So tornadoes only form when the thunderstorm has a particular combination of winds. A rise in thunderstorms can begin to spin when it is affected by winds blowing in the different directions. It starts to rise and is pushed to the side by wind. It raises a bit more and is just jostled again by wind moving in another direction. Winds move in different speeds and directions, different altitudes, causing the raising air to start spinning. Air that spins as it rises is typical in supercells, the strongest type of thunderstorm, but not all spinning air creates a tornado. For a tornado to form, there needs to be spinning air near to the ground. This happens when air is to storm, sinks in the ground and spread out across the land in gusts. Gusts of warm air rise as they blow. Gusts of cooler air sink as they blow across the land. If there are enough raising and sinking gusts, the air near the ground starts spinning. The spinning air near the ground speeds up as it is drawn inward toward the axis of rotation. This happens the same way that figure skates spinning faster when their arms are drawn in rather than when their arms are outstretched. This is called conservation of angular momentum. The, rotation, the rotating air moves horizontally across the land and can be tilted vertically by the force of the raising rotating air. That allows a tornado to form. Most tornadoes form during a supercell thunderstorm. But not all supercell thunderstorms produce tornadoes. Usually, the rotating air near the ground does not rotate fast enough for a tornado to form. If the rotating air near the ground is very cold, it will spread away from the storm along the ground and slow down like a figure skater when they stand arms, and a tornado will not form. The best way to measure the tornado damage was created by Fujita scale. So the Fujita scale is new and the new enhanced Fujita scale used to rate the intensity of tornado by examining the damage caused by the tornado after its pass over a main man structure. So how do you measure them? They are very simple enough to in daily practice without involving much additional expenditure to time or money. From a practical point of view, it's doubtful that any other system will have found its way to, to widespread accept use. The entire premise of estimate wind speeds from damage to non-engineering structure is very subjective and difficult to defend from various meteorological perspectives. Nothing less than the combined influence and, and the prestige of late Professor Fujida and Howley Pearson, director of the NSSFC, National National Severe Storm Forecast Center in 1971 could have brought this much needed system into widespread use. The Fujita scale raised the intensity of the tornado and measured both the path length and the path width. The Fujita part scale is as a follow. Meteorologists at the NOAA Storm Predicting Center issue daily forecaster or convective outlooks for organized severe thunderstorms over the United States based on the current weather observation and forecast models. 
They also closely monitor areas they think they are higher risk for tornadoes. If conditions develop that develop favor for tornadoes, SPC forecaster issue a severe thunderstorm or tornado watch that typically lasts four to six hours. Local forecast offices, emergency managers, storm spotter, and general public are alerted that possibility of severe weather. Tornado warning are issued by the National Weather Service Forecast Office when the tornado has been sighted or indicated by weather radar. People in the warning area should seek appropriate shelter immediately. So meteorologists often rely on massive, massive computer programs called numeric weather prediction models to help them decide if conditions will be right for the development of tornadoes. These models are designed to calculate what the atmosphere will do at certain points of a large area, from the Earth's surface to the top of the atmosphere. Data is gathered from weather balloons launched around the globe twice each day. In addition to measurements from satellites, aircraft, and temperature profilers and surface weather stations, the models start with these current weather observations and attempt to predict future weather, including supercells using physics and dynamics to mathematically describe the atmosphere's behavior. The predictions are usually output in text or graphic. In the United States are two regions of a disproportionately high frequency of tornadoes. Florida is one and Tornado Alley in the south central United States is the other. Florida has numerous tornadoes simply due to the high frequency of almost daily thunderstorms. In addition, several tropical storms or hurricanes often impact the Florida Peninsula each year. When these tropical systems move ashore, they embed convective storms in the rain bands, often produce tornadoes. However, despite the violent nature of tropical storms or hurricanes, the tornadoes they spawn, some as a wider spouts, tend to be weaker than those produced by unknown tropical thunderstorms. Tornado Alley is the nickname given to an area in the southern plains of the central United States that consistently experiences a high frequency of tornadoes each year. Tornadoes in this region typically happen in late spring and occasionally the early fall. The Gulf Coast area has a separate tornado maximum nickname, Dixie Alley, with a relative high frequency of tornadoes occurring in the late fall, October to December. A strong the violent tornadoes, those are F3, or a strong the EF tornado damage intensity scale, are relatively rare and do not typically occur outside the United States. Although the boundary of Tornado Alley are de debatable, depending on which criteria you use, frequency, intensity, or events per unit area, the region from central Texas northward to northern Iowa and from central Kansas to Nebraska east to western Ohio is often collectively known as a tornado alley. Meteorological, the region known as a tornado alley is ideally situated from the formation of supercell thunderstorm, often to produce a violent EF2 or great tornadoes. Overall, most tornadoes, around 77% in the United States, are considered weak, EF0 or EF1, and about 95% of all United States tornadoes are below EF3 intensity. The remaining small percentage of tornadoes are categorized as a violent EF3 and above. Of these violent twisters, only a few, 0.1% of all tornadoes, achieve EF5 status, with estimated winds over 200 miles per hour and nearly completely destruction. However, given the on average over 1,000 tornadoes hit the United States each year, that means that 20 can be expected to be violent and possible one might be incredible EF5. Another one is the water spout. Water spout is a column of cloud-filled wind rotating over a body of water. 
Despite its names, a water spout is not filled with water from the ocean or lake. A water spout descends from an accumulus cloud. It does not spout from the water. The water inside the water spout is formed by condensation in the cloud. There are two types of water spouts. Tornadic water spouts or fair weather water spouts. Tornadic water spouts gather star uh, through tornadoes, influenced by wind associated with severe thunderstorms. It rises and rotates in a vertical axis. Tornadic water spouts are the most powerful and destructive type of water spout. Fair weather water spouts, however, are much more common. Fair weather water spouts are rarely dangerous. The clouds from which they descend are not fast in moving, so fair weather water spouts are often static. They are associated with developing storm systems, but not storms themselves. Both tornadic and fair weather water spouts require high level of humidity and a relative water warmer temperature compared to overlaying air. Water spots are more common in tropical and subtropical waters, such as the Florida Keys, the islands of Greece, and off the east coast of Australia.